Thank you for choosing this High Calling Ministries message. May it inspire, challenge and encourage you to move to a higher place in God. Now for Dr. Mike Guy. Good morning. God bless you. Let's have a word of prayer as I minister this word. Precious Lord, we come into your presence. We want to greet you and bless your holy name. And thank you for the blessings of life. You daily load us with benefits, and we, we, we're so blessed and grateful for that. Watch over us today. Bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart. May they be acceptable to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to say this before I even start. Some of you may have read a book, Daily Devotions, an old book by Oswald Chambers called My Utmost for His Highest. Very good. Some very good, deep, stimulating thought. Oswald Chambers makes a statement. He says, your reach must exceed your grasp. Your reach must exceed your grasp. And in a way, I have to acknowledge that that is where I am this morning. My reach, my grasp is here, but my reach is right out there somewhere. I'm wanting to attain. So I have to confess that I haven't quite attained at all times what I'm going to be preaching. But it's true nevertheless. And I think all of us will possibly reflect on that in a similar way later on. During the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, the children of Israel were commanded under Moses to worship in a tent or a tabernacle and that the Levites were to be in charge of that priesthood. In Exodus chapter 29 and verse 43 to 45, you may like to turn to it, but I'm not going to wait for you to turn to it. Um, But in that Exodus chapter 29, Verse 43 to 45, we read about Aaron and how he and his sons were to minister in this priestly office. The Bible says in verse 43, And there in this tent in the wilderness, I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. The tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. And verse 44 says, And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, sanctify means to set aside, to separate, to set aside for holy use. I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. And I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons. Now, I want you to listen to this. To minister to me in the priest's office to minister to me says the Lord I'm going to separate them for that purpose and I will dwell among the children of Israel and I'll be their God now turning over the pages of history a few hundred years we come to the time of Samuel that great man of God when Samuel was a young boy He was dedicated to God by his mother and his father. We all know that story. And we read in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 11, And Elkanah, that was Samuel's father, went to Ramah to his house. And the child Samuel did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. Now note what it says here. In the King James it says this, and I'm going to use it from that. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord. He didn't just do the work of the ministry of the Lord. He didn't just minister about the things of the Lord. He ministered to the Lord. The priests under Aaron, etc., ministered to the Lord in the priest's office. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 18, the Bible says, But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child girded with a linen ephod. 
Now, this linen ephod was a sign of the priesthood, was a tunic that was worn by the priests, etc. He ministered to the Lord. God raised up Samuel to be a priest, a prophet, a priest, a, a messenger of the covenant of the truth of God to his people. It was a time when Israel is at an all-time low, and Samuel comes onto the scene. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, we read this. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord. I want you to think about that. The child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious, was scarce, was very rare in those days. There was no open vision. And Samuel comes onto the scene and he ministers unto the Lord. In 1 Samuel 3 verse 21 we read, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel. In Shiloh, by the word of the Lord, he revealed himself, made himself known to Samuel. Now, I was doing a bit of thinking about this and wondering what the difference between ministering for the Lord about the things of the Lord and actually ministering to the Lord. I thought, you know, Lord, that's where we need to be. So when I say that our reach must exceed our grasp, it's out there. We can sing praises to the Lord. We can say, I'm going to a beautiful praise and worship uh, thing at the church. And you may be spending your time praise and worshiping, and you may not be ministry to the Lord. You hearing me? You may not be breaking through into that zone where you actually minister to the Lord. And I started to think about that. I thought, yes, Lord. You see, witnessing for the Lord and being a witness, being a witness for the Lord are two different things. And then I, I was thinking, you know, there's a difference between having faith in Christ and having the faith of Christ. It's not just a play on words. There's a deeper nugget there. Lord, may we have the faith of Christ. We cannot have the faith of Christ unless we have faith in Christ. But they're two different things. One exceeds the grasp. It's a much deeper element. And I think that we need to come to the place in our lives where we realize that, Lord, may my prayers, may my worship actually minister to you, Lord. May my praise and worship minister to the Lord, minister unto the Lord. I thought, well, whenever I'm preaching this message, I'm saying now Aaron and his sons 1,400 years ago, Exodus 29 verse 44 says, and I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister, not for me, but minister to me in the priest's office. I said, Lord, well, I wonder what ministry means. And I thought, well, I, we better look at that. And I started to coin a few little phrases, and I thought, well, this word minister, and I looked it up as I was studying, and I said, yeah, this word minister carries the meaning of one waiting upon. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Have you ever thought what waiting upon the Lord means? It's not only waiting for the Lord to come through for you, but it's waiting on the Lord. Slightly different. Like a waiter comes and 
serves. And as I was studying, I read something interesting. This word minister carries minister, ministered to the Lord, carries the meaning of one waiting upon or serving another. The Greek word diakonos may sound familiar. Deacon. Oh yeah. Diakonos is made up of two words. Dia meaning through and konis. Konis meaning dust. So the word points to one who is dusty from running through the pathway, along the pathway, to come in service for you. I thought, yeah, that's quite an interesting terminology. I said, well, let me write down how I see minister, this word minister. So if I minister to your needs, I'm seeing that I attend to every necessity of comfort that you need. I am ministering to you. The Bible talks about the woman who ministered to the saints. It also says in Hebrews there, these are ministering spirits. These angels are ministering spirits to minister to the saints who are heirs of eternal life. So to minister means to refresh. Refresh, to encourage, to gladden the heart of. I like that. To gladden the heart of. To edify, to comfort, to lift up. So when I'm standing worshipping the Lord, I can sing about the Lord, sing beautiful praise and worship songs about the Lord, but is my praise and worship actually ministering gladdening the heart of, comforting and lifting up and edifying the Lord. When you take a little cat into your arms and you start stroking this cat and tickling him under his chin, he starts going, he starts purring. If I could just take that kind of illustration and say, Does your praise and worship minister to the Lord to such a degree that he purrs? Oh, I love that. That ministers to my soul. Is that where we are? We're praising. We're worshiping the Lord. But are we ministering? Does that praise and worship actually minister to the Lord? Many of you know I do a lot of counseling. People are hurting in their marriage and a lot of other problems. And I usually have a little form that I get them to fill in, a little graph, a little little thing, and they calibrate it. And I said, right, how much did you love your wife? How much did you love your husband? He, He rates and so does she. How much did you love your husband? How much did you love your wife when you first got married? On a scale of one to ten, circle the calibration. How much, question number two, how much do you love her now? How much do you love him now? And they circle it. I said, now the third one's a very important one. How much do you feel loved by your husband? And that's usually quite revealing. How much do you really feel loved? Feel important. Feel edified. Feel comforted. And feel necessary. How much do you feel loved? By your husband. How much do you really feel loved by your wife? And when you look at those ratings, usually tears start flowing. As people realize that how much I say I love her, and how much it's coming through on the receiving set, and how much she feels loved, are two different things. They shouldn't be, but they are. Now, I'm saying that in terms of this message. When we say, I love you, Lord, and we sing beautiful songs of praise and worship, that's the transmitter set sending out the message. Now what I want to do, I want to have a look at at God's rating here, or the Lord's rating, when he rates on the calibration. Lord, how much are you feeling loved by my praise? Am I really ministering to your spirit? Then I thought, now look, God is a spirit, In John chapter 4, 
And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, so that's the key. There's the key. If we're going to worship the Lord, spirit must worship spirit. We must be like John who was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And so as we get into the spirit and our spirits begin to communicate with the Lord, we're beginning to minister to the Lord. And what I want to do is just to bring to all of our notice, including my own, that there is an awareness when we praise and when we worship and when we seek the Lord, are we like Samuel, who is ministering, gladdening the heart of God? Lord, do you really feel loved by my words of praise and adoration? And sometimes we have to come to the place where we say, Lord, I wonder whether I'm just worshipping the Lord, but he's not necessarily being ministered. You hear me? And, and, and when I say this, your reach must exceed your grasp. And I have to honestly say there are times, and quite often, where I think, now Lord, I'm singing these songs, I'm enjoying the melody, I'm enjoying Stan playing and that melody, and, and yes, Lord, I do love you, but there's kind of a distance. There's do I really feel that I've got into the Spirit and that the Spirit is now communicating with God who is a Spirit and there's a beautiful oneness of ministering. And as I do that, He begins to minister to me. Beautiful. Now, I was talking to uh, my daughter Joanne who's leaving Tomorrow to go and live in Australia. It's what a sad thing that he is. And I shared with her a little bit of this. I said, how do you see this? Huh? We're driving in the car, Marion was there, and I said, you know, I'll just talk just briefly about this ministering to the Lord. She said, let me give you an illustration of how I see it. I said, you know, when I got married to Josh, my husband, he proposed to me. And he did it in an unusual way. I don't know whether he took a guitar. He does play the guitar well. But he sang to me. And he sang his proposal to me. And he sang his love song to me. And in his words, he told me how beautiful and how lovely and how wonderful and adorable I was. And he said, he, she said, he just ministered to me in song where I felt so secure, loved, needed, and wanted. He ministered to her. As some of you who are over the 50s will know that in the old days we used to sing songs. We used to, we used to call them choruses. And we sang these choruses and the choruses went something like this. Rolled away, rolled away, and the burden of my sin rolled away. Every sin had to go beneath the cleansing flow. Hallelujah, rolled away, rolled away, and the burden. That was lovely. Then we had another one. Since Jesus came into my heart, praise the Lord. Since Jesus came into my heart, songs of joy, da, da, da. Since Jesus came into my heart, then I am H-A-P-P-Y, I am H-A-P-P-Y. And you know what? Those were good. Those were lovely. We enjoyed them. There were plenty of old numbers like that. But you know what? They were all singing about the Lord. They weren't ministering to the Lord. They weren't singing to the Lord. And then this is only this morning I said to my daughter, Joanne, who's staying with us, I said, love, what is that song we used to sing only about ten years ago now? And I tried to say she couldn't get then she got it. She said, oh, this is what it's called, In Moments Like These. In moments like these, I sing out a song. 
I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to him. I'm singing a love song to him. Now, it is possible to still sing a love song to him. And when you say, Lord, did you like that? Did you, did you feel blessed, Lord? He said, who, who are you? What do you mean, do I feel blessed? I was singing out a love song to you. Oh no, you didn't minister to me at all. Oh, maybe there was something wrong in my ministry. And so I think that when Samuel ministered to the Lord, it was different to him standing in the temple and ministering for the Lord. And I want to bring that to the fore this morning. and Trust that the Spirit will quicken your spirits. And as we have progressed in, in a style of worship from the early 50s that went on to the 60s and in the early mid-60s, I think it was, and in New Zealand, man and his wife brought out scripture in song for the first time ever. And people now moved to another level and started singing scriptures. And then, slowly but surely, as we've moved, if you look at the earthly tabernacle, it's a sign of progression. We've moved from the altar, we've moved deeper in, we're now coming into the holy place, and then we're pressing on into the holy of holies in real intimate fellowship where we're ministering to the Lord. All the songs, or a lot of the songs, are now geared to ministering directly to the Lord and telling the Lord how we love him. Have you ever thought of picking up a guitar, getting on the piano, or going out into the field and just saying, Jesus, I want to sing out a love song to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Praise your glorious name. Have you ever sung like Josh sung to his bride? Have you ever tried ministering to the Lord without crowd, just you and him? That intimate moment, Lord, may my love song to you be a sweet incense that will refresh your heart. That's the message I've got this morning. Lord, Teach us, teach us, Lord, how to minister on your behalf to the people. Teach us how to praise and worship you on your behalf for the people. But, Lord, above all, teach me how to minister to you to gladden your heart, to make you feel so blessed and so exhilarated and so lifted up where you really feel loved in return for your lavish love that you give humanity. Do you really feel loved? Do you really feel ministered unto, Lord, this morning? We've had two hours of praise and worship and people have been praying and jumping and blessing and thanking and the music has been beautiful, the melody has been wonderful. Lord, it's been great. We've got every synthesizer going and every violin and every ministry. And the Lord could quite easily say, yeah, there's been a lot of noise and you think you'll be heard by your much shouting? But I really can honestly say, I don't feel any more loved, any more ministered to than when you first started. And that could quite easily be the case. God forbid, but it could quite easily be the case. And yet we can go away ministered to and feel, oh, wow, what a beautiful might, beautiful praise and worship. Man, it was coming out of ears. It was wonderful. I want to get you to take that little rating schedule, Lord, and answer question number three. To what degree did you really feel loved and appreciated by my praise and worship? Did I minister to you, Lord? 
And I want all of us, and please don't think I'm preaching down at anyone, because I can honestly say, I have not reached that place where it's an eternal in the Holy of Holies. And we could just feel that beautiful fragrance of joy and intimacy of praising and blessing and thanking God. I have not reached there. That's my grasp. That's not my, beyond my grasp. It's my reach. So I want to leave you with that challenge this morning and ask you just to consider it. And, and I want, and I want to just read a portion from the book of, of uh, Revelation, Revelation chapter four. There's one that I know that uh, Chris, Clapp, uh, Chris Westerdahl loves. He has read it on a number of occasions. And I know it's beautiful, wonderful. And I want to leave that with you as a final parting shot. Let's have a look at it. Revelation 4, verses 8 through 11. Now, this is in heaven. And it's talking about these six-winged creatures, these angelic beings, whoever they were or whatever. But it talks about them in verse 8. And it says here, verse 8, they had six wings, and they were full of eyes within, and they they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and Thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. Then the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, Lord. O Lord, thou art worthy to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they were, are, and were created. That's true worship. That's ministering to the Lord. And so I want us to have our focus and introspection on ourselves and ask the Lord and allow the Lord to ask of us, is my life a symphony? You see, because I can worship in the church and praise the Lord, but my very life may not be a symphony of grace and an aroma of blessings to the Lord. And I'm not ministering to the Lord because it's got to be a lifestyle as well as a preacher, a teach, a minister, and a ministry in the church. It's got to be a lifestyle. You remember some time ago, I, I told a little story about, uh, I, I don't know where it was, but let's just say, this couple who lived in in uh, in Italy or something, a young couple who got married, and they moved into this old villa, this old place, and there was a bit of a church steeple thing that, right above them, and, and the white pigeons used to come along and nest in there. And every time they used to argue and shout at each other, the pigeons would fly out of the, the belfry or wherever they would fly out. When the peace came back into the home, the pigeons came back. And I wonder whether on the stage or we're ministering to one another and we're not altogether ministering to the Lord because our lives are out of gear because on the stage we look good but behind the scenes the white dove has flown out of the belfry because of the arguments and the tension in the home that no one else sees so Lord may I sing out a love song to Jesus please Lord And let my whole heart, let my whole life be a beautiful symphony of praise and worship. That, Lord, just like that little cat, as we cuddle it and tickle it under and stroke it, it begins to purr. Lord, sorry for using that little illustration, but, Lord, it does explain what I'm trying to say. Lord, do you purr? And feel so ministered to. Does it gladden your heart 
when I praise and am I coming through, Lord? Are you feeling ministered to? So let that be the cry of our hearts this morning. And Lord, if we are in a place where we feel cold and distant and perhaps we're not breaking through like, like we should, and we're praising and worshipping, but we're not ministering to the Lord, it's not coming through on the receiving set like it should, then Lord, this morning I pray that you'd change the direction of our life. And just inject an intimacy into our beings that will begin to minister grace and love and comfort and just gladden your heart. That's my prayer in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. If you have been blessed by what you have just heard, share it with your friends. You can visit our website at www.highcallingnz.com to listen to more inspirational messages. Until then, let the mind of the Master be the master of your mind.